Hello people, in this video let us look at hypertensive retinopathy. This is an important topic for the examination. Basically, uh, let us first of all break these terms. Hypertension retinopathy, right? So basically what is hypertension? Hypertension is nothing but high blood pressure. So you know about uh, what blood pressure is. Uh, you know uh, what are the levels of blood pressure, right? So you know that there can be hypertension stage 1, stage 2, etc. Hypertensive crisis and all that. So basically here we are talking about uh, this hypertension, this excess blood pressure. What effect it will have on the retina? What is retina? Retina is this neurosensory membrane that li lines the inner surface of the back of the eyeball. right? So here you have sclera, then choroid, then in the most you will have the retina. So you know the layers of the retina, this yellow, yellow color thing what they are showing, right? that is the retina. Right, so basically, the retina will have blood vessels. Right, the retina itself has blood supply. Right, and now if there is hypertension, what exactly happens to these blood vessels because of which the retina will get damaged? That is retinopathy. Pathy is always pathology. Okay, so basically, the retina's artery and even the choroid's arteries, all these if there are problems okay so this is the sclera outermost then you have the choroid then you have the retina so basically whenever there is hypertension all of these the choroidal arteries can get damaged the retinal arteries can get damaged there can be hemorrhage right so all this we will look at in this video so why exactly does this happen because of hypertension what exactly happens in these blood vessels we will look at that there can be vasoplasm there can be scler sclerosis there can be increased vascular permeability that can lead to edema there can be increased intracranial pressure that can lead to optic disc swelling right all that we will come to now uh, what are the clinical features we can see that there is benign or chronic hypertensive retinopathy and malignant means sudden increase right that is what is malignant hypertensive retinopathy hold on then you have the features of each of this in the benign or the chronic slowly for long time this hypertension has been there what are the features in this there will be some uh, uh, some features that you see in the fundus examination when when you do this fundus examination some features that you see right then in malignant hypertensive retinopathy what you exactly see all that will be there okay so if you look at this in the benign one you will see something called as AV nicking and all. So in the Wikipedia image they have actually shown this AV nicking and mild vascular tortuosity. Okay. So these are some signs. Okay. Then staging. You can stage the hypertensive retinopathy. There are so many types of classification. Keith, Wagner, grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4. So many modified and all. Mitchell, Wong classification is there. So basically how will you manage the hypertensive retinopathy also we have to know. So basically hypertensive retinopathy uh, based on the uh, grades. So if it is mild how will you manage control the blood pressure etc etc. We will look at all these. Okay. So malignant what they are saying is don't reduce the BP suddenly. Gradually you can reduce the blood pressure. So now let us get started with hypertensive retinopathy. From the textbook we will uh, read line by line. And we will try to understand what exactly this hypertensive retinopathy is. So here we are going to learn the fundus changes that occurs because of systemic hypertension. Which hypertension are we concerned here? We are concerned with systemic hypertension. Okay. So basically there are many types of hypertension. You have pulmonary hypertension, portal hypertension. Here we are concerned with systemic hypertension. That is maximum generalized part of the body. right? Not specifically somewhere like pulmonary or something. This is systemic hypertension. Now what is the pathogenesis? Why exactly this the, does the retina get damaged? Okay, so That is what we will look at here. In the hypertensive retinopathy pathogenesis. Okay. So basically there can be there can be vasospasm and because of the spasm of the blood vessel there can be narrowing of the blood pressure. Now this blood pressure narrowing uh, what did I say? So narrowing of the blood vessel because of the spasm this can lead to increased blood pressure. Okay, So there can be acute hypertension. So what and all can undergo vasospasm? The retinal artery can undergo vasospasm the choroidal vessels can undergo vasospasm then peri 
peripapillary peripapillary choroid okay i think choroidal vessels that's what they mean here the peripapillary choroidal vessels also can undergo vasospasm so let's just understand this one now vasospasm of the retinal arterioles arterioles these are smaller blood vessels arterioles so this occurs in pure form in young individuals but is affected by pre existing involution scler involutional sclerosis in older patients so it can happen in young people okay in pure form but in older patients it happens because of pre existing involutional sclerosis then what happens to the choroidal vessels again vasospasm of the choroidal vessels this can lead to choroidal and uh, choroidal ischemia and also the retinal pigmental epitheliums ischemia so if you know if this is the eye okay this is a bad color please give us a better color we'll try to understand this line choroidal vessel if it has vasospasm what will happen so if this is the sclera inside you have the choroid and then you have the retina in the retina you know the first the outermost will be the pigment epithelium then you have the neurosensory retina so what happens if the blood vessel of the choroid is uh, having ischemia not only the choroid suffers ischemia even the pigment epithelium of the retina that is rpe can undergo ischemia right <coughs> so you know the layers of the retina should we explain that also so here what they are showing this will be the choroid here and this will be the pigmental epithelium so choroidal ischemia will happen pigmental epithelium also will undergo ischemia okay this will be manifesting as hypertensive choroidopathy <clears throat> but here we are more concerned with the damage to the retina so retinopathy so peripapillary choroid vasospasm this leads to optic nerve head ischemia so the optic nerves head will undergo ischemia okay and this will manifest as what hypertensive optic neuropathy so you can see here what the peripapillary choroid means okay just around this optic nerve right okay so moving on guys so we are discussing the pathology right the, the pathology here they have kind of mixed the reasons also etiopathogenesis you can say so basically we are moving on to the second point here arteriosclerotic changes that is the thickening of the blood vessel okay this can lead to hypertension right oops so the thickening of the blood vessel can lead to hypertension so now why this thickening happens some uh, in older people uh, involutional sclerosis basically this all this arteriosclerotic change will lead to thick blood vessels in this potanol you will see you will see change in the arteriolar reflex and av nipping you will see okay guys so now let us move on to the third etiology here etiopathogenesis increased vascular permeability so if the permeability of the blood vessel increases what will happen why is the permeability first of all increasing because there will be hypoxia hypoxia will lead to the breakdown of the inner blood and retinal barrier so there will be <coughs> hemorrhage there can be exudates there can be edema what and all edema can be there focal retinal edema macular edema disc edema so many types of edema when you coming to exudates they are talking about exudates transudates right here they are talking about f i p t s focal intra retinal peri arterial transudates okay focal intra retinal that is within the retina peri arterial transudates okay so all these things can happen because of increased vascular permeability then we will move on to the fourth point here guys that is the increased intracranial pressure because of this hypertension intracranial pressure increasing that can lead to optic disc swelling that is papill edema right papill edema all this you should know okay this is patho genesis of hypertensive retinopathy guys so have you understood the pathogenesis of hypertensive retinopathy can you tell the four points vasospasm right then uh, uh, arterio arteriosclerotic changes increased vascular permeability raised intraocular pressure okay now we have to look at the clinical features in that we have to look at the benign uh, benign or chronic hypertensive retinopathy then we have to look at the malignant malignant hypertensive retinopathy so benign we will look at what and all benign or chronic in the chronic condition you will look at some fundal changes okay we will come to all this then you will look at the malignant hypertensive retinopathy 
Okay, then we will look at the stages of hypertensive retinopathy, mainly this one, Keith Wagner classification for which the diagrams are also available in the textbook. Then management, we already told you, blood pressure control, cholesterol lowering, etc. Okay, so in this, uh, in the next video, we will do one thing, we will continue with this benign, okay, we will continue with this benign or chronic hypertensive retinopathy. So if you are interested in knowing about the clinical features, the fundal, uh, the fundus changes, etc. Please come for the next video. Bye-bye.